we had, uh, all we had was snail mail, um, the kind that goes through the post office. We had pen pals. I actually met my husband when I was 16 and we wrote letters for two years uh, before we got married and lived in the same state because um, he was from California and I was from Colorado. And yes, I did get married at 18. I know, so very strange. Um, and yes, we are still married. So um, yeah, so you know, like there are, I know it's so sweet, but um, yeah, we still have all those letters. It is kind of a, um, and they are artifacts of where we are and the um, artifacts you built is the letters those will stay with you. I mean, like that's history you just created. So that's kind of cool. There are 28 of us here now. We have um, 30 in the class, um, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to the strangest, the strangest, strangest situation of my lifetime. And I'm really old, so I've been around a while. Um, but yeah, simultaneously, we've got this pandemic going on. People are confined to their homes. There's limits to how much we can go out. We wear masks everywhere we go. Um, yeah, we don't want to shake hands with anybody anymore. Um, and then on top of that, we have um, civil rights protests, um, calling attention to things that America should be aware of already, um, but collectively we're paying attention to it right now. And we're paying attention to the combination of those inequalities and COVID is raising attention to inequities. Um, the way we're experiencing the pandemic is entirely different based on who we are, where we live, um, some people have lost jobs. They're concerned about eating and paying rent. And some people have actually made money off of this. Um, I would say I'm in a fortunate sense that's that sort of breaking even, you know, like, I, I, I mean, it's different. We're all experiencing this differently, which is calling attention to inequities. And so, I mean, it's this weird, weird, I, I'm telling you, it's the strangest, time of my entire lifetime. And I've experienced a lot of things in my lifetime. Um, so we'll talk about that over the course of the semester, but let me um, share um, the PowerPoint and um, you should be able to see this right now. I'm gonna go to grid view. Um, do you all see the PowerPoints? You can just nod. Yes, thank you. I can go back to speaker view and um, we can do this. Yeah, this is um, RWS 200, the rhetoric of written argument in context. And you can see this really strange image. Um, you all know that it's the Statue of Liberty, but it's abstract, it's red in the background, it's like there's rain. I, I don't even know how to describe this. Um, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it another time because we'll be back to that image. Again, I love images and um, because images speak to me. And so this is our agenda for, agenda for the entire week. We're starting out kind of slowly because I felt like, um, yeah, it's a strange time. So it's worth it to take some time and get used to everything, to acknowledge that it's strange. Um, I want to meet you through your writing and through conversations, but I also want you to meet each other. Um, I want you to get familiar with Canvas and how to work on Canvas because we will be using it for all our coursework. And I want to introduce the class topic and we'll do that more next time. Um, there are a lot of things to get done here. Um, just a few sort of housekeeping things. When you log on to Zoom, you'll go into a waiting room and I have to let you in. The reason for that is I had some colleagues who experienced 
Zoom bombers and it was uncomfortable. I don't think that's gonna happen because I have a unique link for every single Zoom classroom that I have, um, but I left it there anyways. You can you choose to use your video or not. I actually do like to see your face, but I understand sometimes you just don't want to show your face. And 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 I I get that. I took a lot of um, classes over the summer, and some of them were classes, you know, like where we were meeting on Zoom. I did a lot of work shoot chops a lot of department meetings, and sometimes I showed my face, and sometimes I just go, you know what, I'm eating. I don't want ever to anybody, you know, like they were three hour long meetings, and I didn't want people to see me chew. So I, I definitely understand that. Uh, make sure you mute yourself when somebody else is talking, because there's ambient noise. Um, sometimes you might hear my dogs, but um, I might hear somebody who's walking in the room with you or somebody who asks you a question. Um, at the bottom of your page on Zoom, if you can click on chat and send messages or questions to the class, you can actually ask me questions. Um, alternatively, you can raise your hand by clicking on raise hand and I will get a notification. Um, if we were in a face-to-face -face classroom, um, I would ask you to, you know, like just raise your hand and ask a question and at any point in the discussion, and I will invite you to do that here. Um, before we get started, though, um, I wanted to share this with you. It's an acknowledgement of the Kumeyaay who um, occupied the land of San Diego State and most of San Diego County um, before. And so let me just share this with you. Sorry about that. Hoka, Noshkana Nechihi. I'm the tribal liaison of San Diego State University, and I'm now going to read the Kumeyaay land acknowledgement. We stand upon a land that carries the footsteps of millennia of Kumeyaay people. They are a people whose traditional life ways intertwine with a worldview of earth and sky. In a community of living beings, this land is part of a relationship that has nourished, healed, protected, and embraced the Kumeyaay people to the present day. It is part of a worldview founded in the harmony of the cycles of the sky and the balance and the forces of life. For the Kumeyaay, red and black, represent the balance of those forces that provide for harmony within our bodies as well as the world around us. As students, faculty, staff, and alumni of San Diego State University, we acknowledge this legacy from the Kumeyaay. We promote this balance in life as we pursue our goals of knowledge and understanding. We find inspiration in the Kumeyaay spirit to open our minds and hearts. It is a legacy of the red and black. And it's a land of the Kumeyaay. Yechan, my heart is good. I think it's important to do this, particularly given the our subject matter, um, which is what is America. And as I think about um, as I think about this increasingly common practice of a land acknowledgement, considering the people that had this land before we came here, um, before the settlers took the land, um, I think it's really important to acknowledge that. It's kind of a weird thing to remember, but I think it's important that we remember. So on to that, who am I? Um, I am a San Diego State alumni. I graduated from San Diego State in 1987 um, with an undergraduate degree in French. I planned to be a French teacher, which I never did. Um, and I had a, also a, a degree in creative writing because I wanted to write books, something else I never did, but I loved to write. And so, um, 
Later on, when my kids got older, um, I homeschooled them for 20 years. Um, well, actually, none of them ever went to school. So that's a whole other story. Um, but I started asking myself, what do I want to do? And I knew I wanted to teach. I knew when I wanted to teach at the university level. And I thought, what do I want to teach? I mean, I love everything. I love history and anthropology and sociology and psychology. And I want to teach writing because if students can write, then they can succeed in anything. And so I came back to San Diego State and I got a master's in, in rhetoric and writing studies. And here I am I'm working here. I also work at Southwestern, but I'm here at San Diego State full time. And I divide my time from between teaching and working in the writing center, which is fully online right now. So that's also strange. Um, you are welcome to call me Erin if you want to. Um, you can call me Professor Flewelling, Mrs. Flewelling. Some students aren't really comfortable with um, just calling me Erin and Flewelling is a lot of syllables. And so um, they, they've landed on Professor Erin. I am good with any of those. So whatever um, you choose is good with me. Um, I have philosophies of teaching. I think writing is valuable. Writing teaches us to think. Writing allows us to communicate with other people. I think we are continually learning and growing as writers. And the more we write, the more we grow um, in our ability to communicate. And my philosophy is that no matter how we see as writers, we have more to learn. And so my role is to be a support network for you. I want this class to be a support network and for all of us to support each other in, in our writing. Um, I want you to see yourself as a novice writer. You have a level of expertise, certainly. Um, that's why you're in university. Um, but college writing is unique and different. And so see if you see yourself as a novice writer at the college level, um, you'll see that there's a lot up to learn and a lot I can share with you. Um, and by the way, I am not an expert in technology, but I did just create my own Bitmoji when I was really getting sick, uh, stressed about the semester coming up. Um, seriously, I get nervous at the start of every single semester. Um, true story, I am an introvert who has learned to function in the world and um, I have learned that it's okay. So um, I, one of my goals for today is that you would get to know each other just a little bit. And so I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms um, where I want you to share your name, um, where you're taking this class. Some of you are at your homes in San Diego, you live in San Diego County, or you're um, somewhere else in California, or another state, maybe even another country. Um, share your major if you have declared one or a possible major. And then one interesting thing or not so interesting thing about yourself. Um, for example, I have eaten camel. True story. I was in Nairobi at the Carnivore Cafe and they served us camel. We also ate ostrich, but that's a whole other thing. Um, other students have shared, um, one student shared that she had 25 brothers and sisters true story. Um, other students have shared that they play guitar or they dance or that they, yeah, anything, just something interesting about yourself. So um, I'm going to get, I'm going to take us out, I'm going to stop share, take us into the gallery view again and um, put you into breakout rooms. You'll know, have about three minutes to, um, to share, and um, you'll get an invitation to, um, 
you'll get an invitation and you'll be in there for three minutes. So when you get that invitation, just accept it and you will see other people. Hey Google, set timer for three minutes. So almost everybody's back now. I want you to think about, you know, like what was, you just met a lot of interesting people. Um, what was the most interesting place somebody is meeting um, or having school or um, the most interesting thing that they shared about themselves? Um, you can raise your hand. Um, the little icon, or you can um, you can just unmute yourself and share. Somebody in my group said that they were uh, from, uh, they grew up in India for a little bit, which was really cool, just having been there. So that's cool. Yeah, totally cool. Anybody else? Third. Uh, yeah. Oh, someone in my group said that they own a horse back home. Oh, so who who owns the horse? That's uh, that's me. Um, Drake. Yeah. Yeah. So, are you um, are you in San Diego right now? Yeah, I'm in San Diego right now. And your horse is at home. What made Back you home. decide to come to San Diego? Uh, I mean, I've always wanted to try out like the SoCal life and stuff. I mean, you can't beat the weather down here too. So I decided to, uh, why not try? Yeah. Uh, Where are you was... from? Uh, I'm from right outside Sacramento, like Roseville, California. So, yeah. Oh, very cool. How many of you are living on campus? That's a lot of you. Is it weird being on campus? Is it like, like a ghost town or? No, quite the opposite for me. I'm used to living like in like a real small area and there's so much going on like all the sirens and everybody just being here. I mean, it feels, it doesn't feel like a ghost town to me, but I never saw it at full capacity. So I don't know. You will, you will. Um, it's, are the, are the dining halls open? I do not even know. I've only been to like the places by the South Campus Plaza for eating. So that's all I know. Yeah. One of my favorite restaurants is Eureka, right? off of campus. I really oh, like that, that one's one. not open. That one's closed. Oh, it is. I was hoping yeah. that it was open. If they open, they have amazing Brussels sprouts. Sorry, things I think about Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and yeah, they have chili sauce on them, which is um, like Asian chili sauce. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> so many things to think of. Um, let's uh, get back to yeah. Um, you will find that I often um, get distracted, but um, so I want to do one more breakout room. So you meet a few more people, but this time I want to focus on this image. Um, I use a lot of images. I mentioned that and I saved, I found this one on Google Docs and um, or on Google Images, and I labeled it analysis. So share the same things, your name, where you're taking this class, your major if you've declared, an interesting thing about you. Um, and then as a group, I want you to look at this image 
and I want you to talk about how it represents analysis. Now, I'm gonna take us back into the breakout rooms. And um, in the chat, I'm sending you a link to a news article where I pulled this picture. Don't worry about anything in the news article. Just, you know, like you can just copy paste that into your browser and you'll be able to see it um, and talk about it because I want you to analyze it. Analyze analysis, that's a little meta, but um, um, to analyze something is to break it down. Like you'll see an image, but then look at it at distinct elements and think about why I chose that image to represent um, analysis. So breakout rooms, I'm gonna do um, more breakout rooms this time because I want there to be fewer people in them um, so that you have a little bit more time. So you'll get that invitation and then you'll get a warning that it's the, you're gonna be kicked out of the breakout rooms in 59 seconds. So here we go, open rooms. Hey Google, set timer for 2.5 minutes. We meet at one o'clock um, and you, on Mondays, you'll begin your work on Canvas, the asynchronous content. You should continue that asynchronous content on Canvas on Tuesday. We will meet back again at one o'clock on Wednesdays and your first set of homework will be due that night. You can do it sooner than that. You don't, it'll be based on what we do, what you do on Canvas. On Thursday, you'll post a discussion board post. Um, it's due at 11.59. And on Saturday, the last set of homework will be due and the next week's Canvas page will open up to you when you finish. You'll notice there's nothing on Friday, even though our class is a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, because I wanted to reserve that for your asynchronous work. Um, any questions about this schedule? Okay, keys to success, get familiar with Canvas and other technologies, attend on Zoom or by watching the videos and doing the work, pay attention to the schedule, don't skip any pages of the asynchronous work, do your work early when you can, um, Stay in touch with me and any groups you're working on with. Um, communication is going to be super, super important. Um, if you are registered, I'm pulling my dog up because he's climbing all over me, um, trying to get up. This is Diego, and he is one of my chihuahuas. Um, if you're registered with SASE, the Student Ability Success Center, please let me know as soon as possible. If you're a student athlete, let me know that. If you're gonna miss classes due to religious holidays, it's important that I know in advance. If you're struggling with Canvas, I may be able to help you or at least refer you to somebody who can. And if anything is going on that could affect your schoolwork, um, you get sick, a family member gets sick, um, something is happening, please let me know. Um, it's possible that we can find some workarounds for you. Um, you can get help with your writing. There's two ways. Um, you can go to the Writing Center. I'll talk more about the Writing Center. Um, and we are also going to have um, Alyssa. This is Alyssa. Um, she is going to, she's not here today because she is a barista. In, um, she's in Idaho right now, I think and she's working right now, but she will be with us on Wednesday and you'll meet her then, but she is available for um, help. You also can get extra credit for going to the Writing Center or um, working with Alyssa. Uh, um, up to 10 points in September, October, and November, total of 30 extra credit points. Um, I'll talk more about that later. By the way, the Writing Center is completely 
online and you would definitely meet um, online with Alyssa too. You can also meet with me um, in my office hours on Mondays, um, the hour before our class from 12 to 12.50 or on Wednesdays at 10 to 10.50. Office hours are a great opportunity to get to know me, ask questions about assignments, um, ask questions you didn't feel comfortable asking in class, um, or to have me read and give you feedback on your writing. Um, I know professors can seem intimidating, but honest, I am just human and I teach because I like students and I value student success. And so please, please come see me. Um, that is everything I have for today. And um, any questions for me before we close out and end the class? Um, when will we learn about, or when will we know like what book we need or any of the materials? Really good question, Alexis. Um, something I would absolutely talk about in class. Um, the textbook is a course reader only available from Montezuma Publishing. And you can pick it up if the book, I think the bookstore is open, you can pick it up if you're on campus or you can order it online. Um, it's just called the RWS Course Reader, and um, it should be listed with the course. Okay, um, like in the syllabus? It's named on the syllabus. It's okay, very perfect. small. Um, all the other readings will be available on Canvas. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Other questions? All right, it's 147 and we're done. It was really nice to meet you all. Thank you so much for showing up here on Zoom and I will see you on Wednesday.